Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today I thought we would do a watercolor journal. I built my own. Um, I find watercolor journals or pads, they come in a usual kind of flip up type glued uh, surface. And they're either glued at the top here like this one and which is great i mean they're basic watercolor pads but i thought it would be kind of fun to build my own little watercolor journal so that i can experiment in and it uh having something pretty i find kind of encourages me to want to paint more so i started this journal and uh, i started some experiments here and you'll see that they're they're kind of random i've got different styles and different colors and i only just started it so i've got it taped off and then i kind of play and then I might come back to it and play some more so I wanted to build one of these with you and what I like about this style of journal is that it completely lays flat so it doesn't matter where you are in the book the uh, pages will open up completely open and that is due to the style of the binding that we're using and uh, it slides in these little pockets like a little sleeve so you can see the the pages go into these sleeves so i googled how to build a watercolor journal and i got this idea from a channel called lindy pratt and uh she she gives you probably much better instructions than i'm going to today because i don't have editing software so i'm just gonna kind of build and maybe do a little watercolor with you guys so uh i've got some samples here um, of little bits and pieces of watercolor paper uh, that get scrapped. So here's another scrap. So I'll reuse them. Here's a, a cutoff, a main bottom cutoff that I have already put together. So this is the one we'll build the cover for. But I wanted to walk you through really quick um, how to actually do the. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I have stuff everywhere as usual. Um, how to put together I just lost my needle hang on one second I'm gonna need that later how to actually do the binding because I'm not very good at it and I always look for the easiest ways to do things so these have been cut down so I think it's one of these yeah and basically I just fold my scraps in half so I'm not gonna give you measurements because your scraps will be your size or maybe you take a cheapy watercolor pad and just build your own watercolor book with it so that it looks pretty you can take apart a brand new pad so i just fold them in half and then i put two together so this guy's not two this guy will go with this so you can see the colors don't even match they're they're just random random scraps that i've cut down all to the same size and i just fold them in half and i tuck uh two together and then I hold them in place with these little clips. Whoops. <clears throat> Today, there we go. Hold them together in, with these little clips as straight as I can. And there's really, I'm sure you can Google binding a book and there'll be a million different ways of doing this. But um, I just kind of do it the lazy way. So you can put a ruler here and mark even numbers, but I just take a pencil and run a line down as straight as I can. And then I'll do probably one more in the middle here. There's all kinds of really pretty bindings you can use, but that's that's my easiest way. And I think this is the way she does it in the video too, which is why I, I like the video so much. And then all I do is I poke a hole. So I try to keep them all up the same way because the measurements, because we didn't measure them, they're gonna be different on either end and we want the holes to line up. And then I just take my needle and thread and in this case, I'm just using some, uh, what's this stuff called? Uh, it's cotton, uh, embroidery thread, that's what it is, duh. And then I just find the, the markings and I'm gonna push through. So I'll start on the outside and sew through and leave myself a tail and then I'll come up through the inside. Now you can poke a hole here first so you can see where to feed it through and then I'll come up this way. So this is my least favorite part of bookmaking is the sewing part. I don't have the patience but if you have the patience you can really do some beautiful bindings. This is getting covered in glue this one 
So I don't think it really matters um, if it's pretty or not. So I'm just gonna now tie a knot. I'm tying it pretty, I wanna tie it pretty tight. You know, I don't want the pages to be super loose. And that's the first one. So then I'm gonna go through the next one. I'll just show you two. So I make sure that I grab the right end, that the top stays the top, and then I'll start the process again. So then I'm gonna go through the two together, come around and poke a hole through here so I can see it. Like that. I should probably turn this other light off. It casts a shadow behind me, and then I know where to poke through. Ooh, try and keep your pages together. You can safety, um, you can use a uh, paper clip and all that. Hold it all together and take your time. This I'm kind of rushing because I don't want the video to be too, too long. And then I'm going to line up my pages again, poke through this hole. And then come back around the center. And then the only difference here is you want to sew these two pages, two little signatures together. So you want to pull this tight. Make sure those signatures are nice and close together. So pull on your line. So I, I do find if I were to use something with a little bit of elastic, it's a little bit easier um, than, than this heart. Like the stuff has no stretch to it. Use something cord with a bit of an elastic in it. It's a lot easier. And then I'll sew through this end here and go through both pages and just tie it off and I'll do that with uh, every every piece so I should have probably done it on this side but what I'm going to do what I would do next is sew the next one and then so once I get to here sew this page these two pages together so that it's these all stay together nice and neat so like I said I'm not I don't have a lot of patience um, some people can do a really pretty bind off and uh, but basically you're just sewing these together so that you have several together <laughs> I've said together like five times all right so that's that's what you want to do you want to sew all these together and um, like I said you can google better better videos and tutorials on how to do that part and then what you would do is you put a whack load of glue so you'd hold it together like this with these and then you'd smear it with glue just a PVA like the white glue and then I, you put a piece of paper on top and that's all I do it's very messy but it just reinforces all these pieces together so they're a little bit more structured so you can see they're all sewn together and they all are glued together and now you have yourself a little book now you get the fun part which is my favorite part which is the cover so I have chopped down the back of a watercolor pad, the um, the wood the wood bits, and now I'm going to build my journal. So what I do is I make sure that I give myself enough of an edge around because I want to put that sleeve in, and then this page has to slide into that sleeve. So I want to make sure that I have enough of an edge, and I think it just adds a nice little touch and a little bit of professionalism when it's a little bit bigger than the inside. So all you, all I did was I measured, I just slapped this here and then I used my paper cutter and just gave myself a visual of how much space I wanted. I didn't measure anything. And then I just trace the next one and then I give myself a top. So I make sure the top is as wide and it's a little bit wider than the thickness of my book so that 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 these pieces have a place to butt up against if that makes sense so now I'm gonna just tape them and I found this really fun white duct tape it's just uh, well that's what it's called duct tape in the hardware store and I really like it for a binding but I don't have to decorate I just kind of leave it on the back of the book because I like the white so I'm just going to move these pieces out of the way here. So I'm going to put this guy in the middle. And then I'm going to line this guy up 
and I'm just going to give it basically the thickness of these two pieces added together. So like say an eighth of an inch and you can put something in here if you're not overly confident about lining them up. And then I just pull the tape down and cut it. Oh, come on. I know I brought scissors out. Just trying to be super organized for you guys this time. <laughs> you know what I'm like. So I am gonna cut about here and then smooth it down. And then I wanna, I don't know what I did there, but we'll cut that off. And then I'm just gonna fold it up. And then I just kind of run my fingers in the grooves. And I've got a cover, just like that. And now we get to decorate the cover. That's my favorite part. So I pulled out some papers here. Let's see what I got. Some random papers. And I'm always looking for textures. So I pulled these ones out because I really like the wording on these. I thought these would kind of be fun to glue down. I think we will. Let's see how many of these I've got. Two. Can you have two? I think I have some more in my stash. I just have to grab them. I like the I like the writing, so I think I'm gonna do that. So what I want to do is I want to do enough that I can just wrap it around the book. And then like I said, I like the white tape. So I'm just gonna bring the writing up to the edge of the white tape. And uh keep the tape exposed. So let's get our trusty glue stick out and let's slap some glue on. So be pretty generous around the edges. So that it sticks. We're going to do a wrap around anyways, so it should be pretty, pretty good. I'm going to wrap, stick this here. And then I'll stick this one here, kind of cross over the writing a little bit. So we'll go under with some glue. There we go. Let me move this out of the way. This book's really long. And now I have this edge. So I might just put a little here. Glue those down. And then I think I'll just wrap it. I was gonna trim it, but I think I'm just going to wrap this edge here. And then possibly trim this down because this is gonna be hidden anyways behind the flap that holds the journal in place. I just wanna wrap it to hide these raw edges here. I'll chop a little off the corners. We don't need that much bulk. Glue this too while we're at it. Keep going. There we go. I'll do this first. Like wrapping a present. Push these edges down. Reapply a little more glue. Yeah, she uh, she had this really pretty neat idea of how to build a watercolor journal where the basically this Lynn Lindy Pratt sorry and how to build it so that you can also keep the cover and replace the paper and I love that idea and I really like the idea of it laying flat and then you get to personalize your own watercolor journal which is really I find an inspirational when you're looking around and you see all these kind of pretty ideas and your book looks really pretty. It makes you just want to pick it up and uh, and do some watercolor. Let me just grab some more of that paper if I can find it. Uh, here it is. Grab a couple more. So I want to I want to keep it the same. There we go. Okay. I do this side and just repeat the process. So glue stick. And then we'll uh, we'll build it so the journal can go in, and then maybe we'll do a watercolor painting together. I'm visualizing a feather on this cover. 
because I like feathers. And this is going to be a, a fun watercolor journal in the sense that it's a very different size. So it's not a square. It's a very long, narrow. Uh, so I did the writing in different ways. That's kind of fun too. Um, it's a very long, narrow book. So I really, as an artist, I really like the challenge of working on funny shaped or funny sized papers. So this is very long and narrow. So instantly I would think, okay, this would be more apt to be my landscape type journal where I would play with abstract landscapes or uh, take it with me in the car. And if I saw a really beautiful sunset, just kind of do a quick study of it in this book. And that's why I love kind of making these little journals because you're forced to think uh, and create in a in a unique shape. So it challenges your skills to come up with interesting compositions. And as an artist or as a creative person, you're always looking for a challenge. You know, you get good at something and you enjoy doing it for a while. And then you kind of think, okay, well, I've done that, so maybe I should try something different. And this is a great way to challenge yourself. And a great way to use up your watercolor scraps, right? Which you're always, always looking to do. So there we go. There's our cover. It's kind of cute. So we can decide which way we like the writing. I like this one. It's upside down and everything. But it doesn't bother me at all because I just look at it as texture more than I do um, actual writing. So which way do I want to use? I think because this has a border here, I'm going to use this side so that when we put a piece of paper on here, um, we'll still see the writing around the edges. So that's going to be my front. All right. So I'm going to put just a little bit of extra paper here just because I don't want that, uh, cut it. I don't want it to be completely open because the, the, these folded things are gonna come to about here. So, and I'll show you that in a minute, but I just wanna cover this just so it looks a little bit more polished inside. Okay, so I'll put the lid on, put the lid on, Michelle. <laughs> Notorious, I'll be looking for that glue stick in about two minutes. It will get buried under my desk here. Just a loose piece. I want to make sure it's glued down. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is create the flaps that are going to hold our watercolor book in. So I've got my watercolor book, and now I need something that's going to hold a piece. So when you build this, bear in mind that you will, you will lose the first and last page. You're going to cut these down to hold in your journal. So um, you will have less pages to paint on, just, just so you're aware. And then I had these scrap gray pieces, file folders, and I was trying to figure out the easiest way to explain the measurement on bending these, because you want to make sure that you can slide them in. Right? So what I did was, again, I didn't measure because I'm lazy. So what I did was I put the piece of paper here, the scrap piece, and you want it long enough that it should cover at least over half of the journal because you want to slide most of this in and you want you don't want the book falling out. So all I did was I put that in there. I found a little bone folder, which I actually did find. And I want to make sure that I don't go wider than the book. So let's just grab the book. So I have a quick look at that and I center, center this, I center this. And then I have a quick look to make sure that I, I have some room to play, which I do. I have room on either side, which is important. So I'm just going to give myself maybe an eighth of an inch on either side of the book so that the book has room to fold in. So let's see if I got that right. So now I'm just gonna fold on those lines, see if it works. See if this will slide in, which it does with a little bit of space, maybe even too much space. How close is it to this one? Just about, maybe a hair off. 
and it's not wider than the book. So we're in business. So there we go. That's all you need to do. And then I just take my folder and because this um, folder paper is a little bit thicker, it's kind of like a cardstock. I just want to bend it. So you make two of those. So once you've made one and it works, you can measure this against the, the scrap piece. And now we're going to glue these in. So for this, I'm going to use my heavier duty or glue. And I'm going to try and be patient. You could use double-sided tape. That would probably be even better. I wonder if that's out here. Oh, it is. I might use that for the other side, just so we don't have to wait for this glue to dry. And then you're just going to glue it centered in your book. I'm just going to hold that for a minute while I grab my double-sided tape. I'm trying this Lazy Susan thing on my desk, which is working, but when I spin it, everything falls off it. So it's, I've got to find some better storage containers, I think. So there you go. I just want to make sure that's neat. Make sure there's nothing lifting up in here either, so that when you slide the journal in, that uh, it won't interrupt the paper. And then I'm going to do this. Double-sided tape, fabulous. This stuff's really nice and strong too. I'm just gonna bring it right up to the edge so it sticks really well. Peel that. And just retuck those little edges inside. Okay, and then I'm just gonna bring it over and press it down. Much easier than glue right now. Okay, I just want to make sure that I keep, not that it matters right now, but I keep the right side that I want to do the right way. <laughs> and then I'm going to put this piece on here. And this piece. Yeah, I really love these little watercolor books because I've always got millions of watercolor scraps. And uh, I just like the look of them on my shelf even they're kind of charming and you can do the cover with one of your own little watercolor masters you know you've did a watercolor picture and you think okay well i want to frame that one but i want to use it somewhere well I'll put it on the cover of your watercolor journal i mean awesome showcase your your work you know so that could have gone up a little higher Mm, don't know if I can pull that off. Let's see. I might have to. I think I'm gonna have to tape it again. Yeah, I didn't center that very well. That's okay. Everything's fixable. Nothing's ever permanent. That's why I like crafting. Sometimes making mistakes makes you learn things much faster. All right. It just makes a lot video longer. Sorry. <laughs> so I don't have to go quite as far in the edge this time. Maybe I'll just fold it and drop it and then I can see it a little better. There we go. All right. And then I'll put this piece on and then we'll put the book in and then we'll, we'll do the cover, which again is my favorite part. <laughs> What's your favorite part of building journals? Some people love the sewing part. I've seen some really beautiful bindings where they get really creative and it becomes kind of a, a bit of a artwork on the, on the edge of the book. Looks really neat. Okay, there we go. So I rip this, let's retape that because we need that stuck really well. And let's put the book in. So what we want to do is just chop some off. So I'm going to chop about a quarter of it off on the front and on the back page. And you can see my watercolor paper is all different because again, it's all scraps. And look, there's scraps to throw in your watercolor lap book that we did. And then this is going to slide in. And then you take it over and this will slide in this side. Oh. 
slide in that side and then run it over to the center of the book. Come on, why aren't you sliding? Should I glue it? Oh, it's going under, that's why. There we go. And now you have a book that's in and it will open flat. So you can, here's a super long landscape I could do if I wanted, right? So a great way to use up scraps and a really fun way to build a little book. So let's do the cover. So I'm gonna open it up like this. So I can see my cover. Try not to walk, not knock my water over. And let's do some, uh, let's do some watercolor. So I like framing things. Uh, so you can see in my original here, I have two borders and then the artwork. Uh, that's the kind of look I like to do. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna do on this one. And I thought this time instead of gray, I'd do this kind of pretty mint green from these medical journals that I found. Or even the brown would be nice. Or maybe both. <laughs> Okay, so let's start by cutting this into something more manageable. These were a great find. I was so excited when I saw these. One, I love the color of them. They're just, the, the color's just so pretty. So again, I don't measure, so I'm just going to kind of draw a line of how the border of the paper that I want on the book try that and I'm, just, I'm actually going to use my cutter this time I just don't want to knock that water over That's something I would do I've already knocked a coffee over today see almost did it I'm going to move it way over here all right let's do this here up straight. I think I'm the only person that uses a paper cutter and still cuts crooked. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now I have, I have my border of my paper around and then I have the green. And now I need a piece of watercolor paper. So I had some scraps, I think. We'll use one of these maybe, these folded ones. We'll use this guy. So that's kind of nice. Still a nice green border. I'm just gonna make a mark on my paper and cut him. And then we will cut this guy. So hang on a second. I might want to tape a border on this paper. No, we'll leave it like this. All right, I'm trying to keep everything in frame here. I have two lights on today, so it's casting a bit of a shadow because it is snowing again. Like, snowing, snowing. So, real bummer. I, I love snow, but at this point, it's just plain depressing. <laughs> okay. So, I think I'm going to keep it nice and fresh and bright like this. I'm not going to use my typical grunginess that I like usually. Being it snowing outside, I think the bright, minty, fresh color is kind of what I need to see. So now I think we'll just watercolor. I don't know if I want to add anything else to the background. I was thinking of that brown, but I think now that, that we'll kind of lose the freshness of the book. What do you guys think here? I don't know. It kind of pops the, pops the green a little more too. Do I want to use that? Nah, let's just keep it fresh. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here. I'm not going to glue anything down yet because I might not like my watercolor painting, but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to use a pen. Let's see what I've got. This is my 0 0.1 work. Is it working today? Usually it likes to dry out on me. So I'm just going to sketch. And like I said, I, I feel like I want to do, I don't want to do a landscape on the cover, I don't think. Or maybe I do. Should I do a landscape? I was thinking of feather, like a nice tall feather, and the book would sit like this, but the idea of making this kind of a landscape study book would be kind of fun as well. Let's do it. I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but let's, uh, let's try landscape. So I'm gonna give myself, start with my horizon line, 
which is probably the easiest thing to do. And hmm, maybe uh, some type of landscape in the back. I don't want to do too much in pen because I don't, again, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm painting. We might have to paint something else. And what I did forget was paper towel. But I probably have a piece of absorbent paper somewhere. And a paintbrush. Now, I've got only big ones out here. Do I have any small ones? Let's have a looky see. This is my smallest out here right now, and it's a bit rough. But that's okay. We'll make do. So I'll move this cup, just casting a shadow. And this is a number 10 round, and I think this is a number eight. Let's use the number eight. And I'm just gonna do something loose. So this is my messy palette. I'm gonna use some Payne's Gray here, just to kind of establish my, my cliffs. And I'm just gonna pull it across. And again, this is just something very loose and light. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I want the theme to be kind of landscapey. Let's add some watery blue in there. So this landscape's kind of coming from my head. I really do need paper towel though. I can't believe I forgot that. I was so organized. Just a piece of paper here. If I can just absorb some water off my brush. Take some of this glue off. Just pulling that across. Let's do a yellowy color. So this is Yellow ochre, I believe. Ooh, that's bright. Maybe a little too bright. I have some fabric here that will absorb stuff. Just want to remove some of that yellow. That's a bit too much yellow for what I had in mind. Maybe a little bit of green here. some clouds in. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not a watercolor artist. I just like to play and see where these colors take me. And then I usually kind of doodle over top of them anyways. I'll put a little blue in the sky here. It's starting to curl, so I hope you can see it. And then I thought maybe a little bit of, tiny bit of orange. And then a little bit more blue with some Payne's Gray. So I think this is a phalo blue. And we'll put a little bit of indication of some waves in here. Just keep it something very simple. And then maybe a little more drama in the sky. Cloud formations here. And just kind of let the watercolor do its thing. Remember, it does dry much, much paler than it looks when you first paint it. Something that simple. Get a little darker on the on the land here. Just a little, it's gonna bleed, which I like that effect. Draws me to watercolor that whole bleeding, the whole bleeding thing. And then soften it a bit here. Kind of let it run down. That's kind of fun. And then do I like that color against this? I do. I 
think it needs a little more drama. A little more drama. So what I like to add is maybe some. Do I have? Yes, I do. Some burnt sienna here. Burnt sienna is always my go-to. I find it just instantly warms things, which I love. So a little bit more drama in this guy here. And brown you wouldn't think to put in there, but I do. I'm drawn to browns and blues. So I try to add them wherever I can with each other without going too muddy. And maybe, maybe a green sky. Something different. And then I'm gonna add more with the, um, when it dries, which might be a bit of an issue on this channel right now, uh, because it might take a while to dry. I'm gonna add some more pen to it, because again, I like sketching. So while we're waiting for that to dry, and again, very kind of abstract, but it has a landscape feel to it. Quick study for my head. I'm gonna glue this down while we're waiting. So I'm gonna double tape it because that was so easy. And I bought this tape, so why not use it? So I'm just gonna go right to the edge here. Hope that my watercolor painting dries in time for us to doodle on. in the middle too for good measure all right One, two. I mean that was the simplified landscape I've ever seen <laughs> What's nice is you can always just take that painting off and just if you get if you find no I want to change the cover of my book like I said nothing's ever permanent you just peel it off and stick another painting down so I might change my mind later and put that feather back on that I wanted to do okay so you get kind of a one-shot deal with this because it's tape and I'm just gonna go for it and drop it it's not quite dry yet so one of the things we can talk about while that's drying is uh, washi tape I use washi tape to tape off the edges of my paper now I used to use painters tape but washi tape works fabulous so I'll maybe use a narrower washi tape. It's a bit wide for this book. Um, it is on the pricey side, of course, but what I've found with the washi tape is I get four or five uses out of the tape before it stops sticking. But it offers an awesome, like a really awesome water barrier for your watercolors. And if you're a journal journal journaler <laughs> like me, you're going to have some washi tape kicking around. So then I can peel this off after I've done a painting and stick it to the next page. And as you can see, they are scraps right out of a book. And then just stick it to the next page and I get several uses out of it. So that's how I kind of waterproof. And now I can sketch, I can paint, I can do whatever I want. I can turn it this way and do a study of a tree. I can do anything I want there. So let's see if I can glue this or stick this where it's not too... I'm just going to try and absorb some of that off so that I can stick it down. Okay, double-sided. And of course you would wait till all this dries. But right now for video's sake, I'm going to move forward make a mess <laughs> probably <laughs> uh, it's 
So something a little different than my quickie sketches I've been doing lately. So I hope you like this. I hope it inspires you to create your own little water journal or even sketchbook. Doesn't have to be watercolor. This just happens to be scraps, like I said. And this is primarily pretty cheap watercolor paper for me. I rarely buy expensive watercolor paper. One, because I can't afford it mostly. <laughs> it's, it can be pretty pricey. But usually because I'm just doing experimental things with watercolor. It really helps me just kind of loosen up. There we go. Is that straight? I think it is. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my pen. It's not 100% dry. I think it's dry enough that we can doodle on it. I could be wrong and ruin my pen, but I'm going to try. That's a point one. Where'd my point five go? All right, well, we'll use this. So now I can put in some, some doodles. I'm going to buff up this line a little bit. And of course, you could do this before you glued, stuck it down. But I was just trying to kill time while, while that was drying. I really like the bleeding effect of watercolor. See how it just bleeds down? Or how much fun is that? So even though I didn't use any purple hues, this, this um, what's that called? Gray, the Payne's Gray turns a little violet looking when mixed with other colors. And that's the beauty of watercolor is you really, there's science behind this watercolor stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna put some indication of texture in the water, a little breeze blowing maybe. Just a little scribble. Starting to wish I did do a little ink around the edges now. <laughs> yeah, it's my go-to, I can't help it. So I might have to come up with something there. I might leave it simple like this, I don't know. It's okay to change your mind. Let's pop this back a little bit. I don't want the landmass to touch. I need to be a little open there. Let your eye kind of fill those lines in together. And then maybe we'll put a little bit of indication of trees here. Which we could have done with Payne's Gray, but I didn't think of it till now. So I'm just going to ink it because again, it's just a sketchbook. Just about having fun. You might be pretty far away right now, so let me just be a little closer. Try and stay in frame here. So just you could draw a little house on here. So here in Muskoka, we have a lot of trees. And they're in silhouette. So we don't have to do tons of detail. We're just capturing the shape of them with the light shining behind. Darken up the rock a little bit. A couple of dead trees in there. Let's do a couple of trees over here. So composition wise, you wanna kind of range your trees a little bit so that they're not exactly all the same height. Do little clusters of trees. Just want to make it a little bit interesting composition. Don't want to make it too, too balanced. And you don't want it too uneven where it's not a, a pleasing composition. So you got to kind of play with that till you get something you really like the look of. Kind of test those boundaries. That simple. Maybe some little birds flying in the distance. Right. Very simple landscape. I'll assign your work. And there you go. So 
something that simple. I think I'm going to do a black line around this watercolor paper. I just find it needs some sort of more obvious frame than this green paper. So even though we're going for that light, fresh look, I still feel like it needs a little something, something. We'll see if this line here helps visually pull the pages apart. It's just an idea. There. There we go. So there it is. There's our, uh, our cute little simplified watercolor sketchbook. And this is, again, really great use of scraps and an awesome way just to let loose. You're not overly intimidated by a huge sheet of beautiful watercolor paper. These are scraps and you, you don't mind kind of wasting them if you do paintings and experiment with things and not worry about the end results. This is just to play and figure out what you may or may not like uh, with watercolor. So that is today's tutorial, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you do, please subscribe and hit the like button um, and share and give me feedback on Instagram. Some of you have been really sharing what you've been doing off my channel and I absolutely love that. So please, please keep doing that. Uh, I love to see it. That's why I do these videos so that people get inspired to create their very own and um, nothing makes me happier. So here's two, two homemade watercolor sketchbooks. And again, they're just so much fun. Just literally throwing color down and having fun playing. So I hope you like that. And uh, if you do, have a great day, guys. Thanks. Bye.